Joyce. Hello, Hello Don. How are you? <laughs> so, Ida and I, we're just going to kind of go back and forth with questions. Sure. Um, we just really would love to talk to you and pick your brain a little bit about mm -hmm. all the fabulous work you've been doing nationally that we can still here in Connecticut. Absolutely. Connecticut's been here. a partner for many years, many years, many yeah. years and we love Connecticut. Everyone is smart, able, nice, and and eager. Okay. And so those are three good things. So tell us a little bit about how you got started with the um, school, the Family School Community Partnership work, and where that came from. Well, originally it came because my dissertation way back in the dinosaur days um, was really rather traditional sociology, and at that time, people were asking. They actually were arguing. Which is more important, the family or the school? Oh, and I always thought that was a little bit of a silly that argument. Part, yeah. And um, the study that I did for dissertation proved really clearly to me that both are important. And we better change that question. Mm -hmm. And um, decades and decades of research has always shown the family is an important um, force in people's lives. And so. Uh, there really wasn't much point about that, and there, schools are important institutions in children's lives. We don't learn algebra by right. sticking around home. So the notion really became, if families are so important, as all studies show they are, mm -hmm. how can we help all schools link to families in the way that only now, then, some families do? And that's still true today. Mm -hmm. Some families get involved no matter what. Right. They make it their business to get involved. And they always have, and they always will. But schools need to be ready for all families, not the easiest to reach, not the ones who are already engaged, mm -hmm. but to involve all families changes the question. Right. And it becomes, how do we help schools organize their work so that they're purposefully aware that they can involve all families in ways that help children do better mm -hmm. in school. So the historic data in sociology has been children who have involved families do better in school. Mm -hmm. And no one is surprised about that. But the way you get that kind of result is to have a, a correlational regression line. Some children do better and their families are highly involved. Some children do worse and their families are uninvolved. Mm -hmm. That's not a particularly helpful line. We want to change the mm -hmm. line. We want to have all families engaged as best they can be mm -hmm. to press their kids to do as well as they can in school. We, don't, we want a flat line. We don't want a regression line. And so part of this is a kind of a... Um, kind of an argument in between research and practice. Research loves a regression mm -hmm. line because it's a result. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you get your work published. Practice wants to have equity. They want all children to do as well as they can in mm -hmm. school. And so when we change that question from our families important, because we already right. knew the answer, to if families are so important, how can all schools mobilize that resource, that became a much harder question. Mm -hmm. And then we had to begin to study how could that happen? And what would have to happen in order to help principals, teachers, district mm -hmm. superintendents, state departments really understand the difference that organizing in that way would require. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we've been working on ever since about 1980. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it's a long time, but the questions started off relatively easy in terms of basic research. But as we went on from elementary to middle mm -hmm. to high school yeah. to district leadership to state mm -hmm. leadership, uh, the, the questions get harder mm -hmm. and it gets more complicated. Uh, and so we've been working at that for a long time, uh, not just me, but other researchers as well, and not just me at Hopkins, but my staff that's a wonderful uh, set of individuals mm -hmm. who are really committed to finding the answers to help more schools, districts, and states mm -hmm. actually do the work that this would really require. Well, it's so interesting because before right. we were coming down here, one of the things we were talking about is this is our, you know, our Parent Leadership Training Institute. We have been training parents to be leaders for right. the last 20 mm -hmm. years, and so that whole concept of a tipping point we realized a few years ago 
was that we're we're like on a parallel track, but really only get the parents ready. So right. somebody needs right. to get the institutions you bet. ready. You bet. And so part of what you do in your work in terms of getting the schools ready is critically important. Right. And we right. need to look at uh, as community-based organizations, right. daycare centers, the, the entire realm, because our premise is parent leadership yeah. works in all venues to the benefit of the, the organization, the, stu the kids, and everything like right. that. So what nuggets do you have right. for well, us? Well, parent leadership is important. Yep. But you could, you could train or prepare or ready 10,000 parents, and unless the schools are ready for them, yes. they're just uh, going to be frustrated in, in what they think they now know or can do, and what it would take to uh, really do that work with their children. Uh, we're concerned, and maybe you can be too, not only about the parent leaders, but how the parent leaders work with teachers, mm -hmm. work with principals, yep. and how they reach out to other parents, the parents who have no intention or desire to ever be a leader. Mm -hmm. They want to help their children. Mm -hmm. They know that there are things to do. Sometimes a parent leader can help them, mm -hmm. but sometimes the teachers have to help yeah. them. And sometimes the counselors or principals uh, or others in the school have to help them. And so that's what we mean by partnership. We wouldn't focus in our work right. on just the parents or just parent leaders, mm -hmm. but we need people to do that work right. too. Well, that's, it's part there's, of the puzzle. there's all kinds of sides to this story. Mm -hmm. But unless the district leaders in a, a big district, let's big in relative terms in this country is really five or six schools or more, or 30, mm -hmm. or 100, mm -hmm. or 600. Uh, they're all different sizes of big across the country. But the, the district leadership we've learned recently in our most recent big studies mm -hmm. uh, really is important for helping schools do their best. And not only schools, but all schools within the district. So lots of times reform activities get picked up by one school, mm -hmm. that school, right. or that school. But the notion of helping all schools make a culture of good partnerships in a district means that as parents, like if you have children who are in elementary, yeah. middle, or high school, you don't want the gap to occur um, when the child finishes elementary school and then people say, we don't have any more information right. for you. You want that partnership to continue. And the people who are going to be leaders parent leaders may be different in the middle and high school from mm -hmm. the elementary school as well. But if there's good leadership training, uh, the elementary leaders will grow into right. middle school as you know on their way with their children right. toward high school graduation. Mm -hmm. So Feels parent leadership is part of the story, but there's been a, a good deal of um, kind of escape emphasis on parent leaders. A district will say, well, let's have a parent leadership right. program because they don't want to do the hard work, which is prepare all your teachers, all your principals, to be ready for those leaders. And we really believe that you have to have both sides of this story. So one of the things we, we were talking about is here in Connecticut, um, mm -hmm. we look at zip code like it's destiny. Zip, zip code, code is zip destiny. destiny. Because what happens is the resources in the community as they come together support the family and the child, mm -hmm. oftentimes, mm -hmm. whether mm -hmm. it's well resourced or poorly right. resourced, will determine. So we're trying to figure out how do we get to that next step in all districts? Because the whole concept of universal mm -hmm. services mm -hmm. and bringing things to scale is critically important here. We have, as you know, the hugest achievement gap. Well, so, I, I really do. I know that that's what you say. Oh. But there are big achievement gaps everywhere, yeah. <laughs> and um, and not only between uh, racial groups, but also between uh, other el ethnic and cultural groups, and boys and girls in certain cases, and poor and rich, and so there are a lot of achievement gaps that need to be corrected mm -hmm. all around. I'm sure there are some here too. Yes. Um, in Connecticut, I know that, you, you know, part of the issue really is you have one of the best in my opinion, state policies on family and community mm -hmm. involvement, of school family community partnership. Mm -hmm. In fact, I put it in full in my textbook okay. for college coursework because the Connecticut policy is clear, straightforward, mm -hmm. based on research. It says, do this. Right. I think that here, as elsewhere, 
there's a gap between policy and implementation. Right. Yeah. But to me, policy is meant to be implemented. Yes. We don't put policy on the book so people can ignore right. it. A bunch of good ideas, which never gets um, printed. It gets implemented. It never and gets implemented. you have yeah. state leaders here, like the folks I've been working yeah. with for a decade or more, who are knowledgeable experts in school, family, and community mm -hmm. partnerships. Why this isn't just easy here, I'm not sure. Well, that's what we've been trying to figure out for a long time, <laughs> why it's not as I'm easy, not sure. it looks like we have all the seeds. But Plain you, you not only seeds. have all the seeds and very smart people and very caring people, uh, but even when you raise a problem, um, it's relatively less of a problem than elsewhere. For example, people will say to me, oh, our big districts, oh, they're so much trouble. And they'll be talking about Hartford. Mm -hmm. Hartford has 30-something schools. In our work, that's a piece of cake. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because we work with, with Baltimore or Detroit or Saint, even St. Paul, which is a relatively milder place. They have 70-some-odd schools. Mm -hmm. There is no reason why with good leadership and clear guidance, mm -hmm. I think that that may be part of the Connecticut, um, the Connecticut conundrum really mm -hmm. is people here are so smart, and they keep studying things. Yes, we study a lot. We do. They're great academic <laughs> and, and the issue really is, that's good, nothing wrong with that, uh, but you got to sort of get down to the basic that we call them structures, mm -hmm. the leadership structures and the es essential elements of program development. And then if you can do that, then anything that comes along in the varied studies can then be mm -hmm. kind of inserted as needed, as relevant, and as, as correct. If you keep studying and don't have the basics mm -hmm. in place, then everything sort of just comes along, and so that's not particularly good. So some good. of the translation seems to be missing. Some of the basic building blocks. Okay. Not the translation so much as, okay, now if we just can agree <laughs> that uh, at a school level we need um, a team that's going to work with what you call your school governance council, we're mm -hmm. going to talk about that yeah. today mm -hmm. um, with a group, uh, that that team can really take care of this issue. Mm -hmm. Without the team, the governance council isn't really sure what they're supposed to be doing along this line. They're called advisory on one paragraph, and they're called uh, active in another paragraph. Mm -hmm. And they really do have a mission that is unique and important, but it isn't this mission. Mm -hmm. This mission requires what we call an action team for partnerships mm -hmm. at each school preschool, elementary, middle, high school, who are going to have as their task to reach out to all parents to get them engaged. They will report to the School Governance Council what they're doing, their plans, how they're doing. They will ask the School Governance Council for guidance, advice, help, support, and encouragement. But they don't do the same thing. And the, the notion that one committee, the Action Team for Partnership, could really help this out mm -hmm. in any school is what we've learned over the 16 years mm -hmm. now that we've had a, a, a network, a national network of partnership school in places across the country. Where that team is strong, the program improves from year to year, because we're not talking about magic. Right, right. Improves mean it reaches more families, more different families, in ways that help children in reading or math or science or writing or attendance or behavior or post-secondary uh, plans and so on and so forth. Without that team, people think that each one of them is responsible for the whole story. Mm -hmm. And that's an impossible task. Or they think, well, that's the council, the governing council's job. And it isn't. It's not uh, in the codification for the for the governance mm -hmm. council. That's a new layer of the school governance council. Level, as you know, last right, or the years. leadership teams, yeah. or the school right. improvement right. teams, or, or the whatever the they're called in are, yeah. whatever, yeah. you know. So um, yeah. And that action team for partnership cannot just be anyone, we've learned. Mm -hmm. It has to be a partnership team, which means teachers, parents, administrators, mm -hmm. 
at the high school level students and even community partners are on it. Mm -hmm. Now that echoes your governance council yeah. law, mm -hmm. but it's a different committee. And the notion that it's one and the same is really a difficult thing to crack, apparently, because people say, well, we have a committee. Right. Uh, you, know, you do, but they have a mission, an important mission. So let's get on with the, right, let the other the mission, and if you really want to implement the good Connecticut policy, that's on the books mm -hmm. and in my textbook. <laughs> so, so talk a little bit about that because part I think what might be missing is how we train our our teachers and our school leaders and our district personnel to work with parents. So is there any work in the higher ed system to Well higher ed is a, is part of the story. Okay. But in service education mm -hmm. is the bigger picture for tomorrow in every school. And we really work on both sides. So our um, network is about in-service education. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we know that if teachers and principals and superintendents were trained in their advanced courses or their basic courses to be ready for parents to understand it. As soon as a child enters your classroom, the family is with them, mm -hmm. right there in your room. Uh, and, and the notion that that's happening um, is getting better, but it's way far from where it mm -hmm. needs to be. There are more courses than there used to be. Uh, some of them do use my text and, and even this uh, handbook they use as a text within um, master's degree programs because mm -hmm. that's sort of an action right. research project. But it's few and far between. Mm -hmm. uh, but that isn't the most important for tomorrow in Connecticut. The most important is the in-service side. Mm -hmm and the district level leadership that's necessary within the larger districts to help all schools. Or in the teeny districts um, that people have uh, school-based action teams for partnerships as a committee of whatever their leadership team or governance council is called. Um, it, it's not difficult. In other words, we see in our networks I would say in any given year, 60 to 70 percent of the members in the network, in the data we collect every year, are showing they're making progress. Over 80 percent have teams, they, they, 80, 90 percent have plans written down, they say they're implementing the framework of six types of involvement, which we have to, to get people engaged in different ways. Uh, they say that they're beginning to work on the challenges to reach the uninvolved parents, fathers, mm -hmm. moms who work during the school day, parents who don't speak English at home. They're, the, if they are concerted about it and have joined our network, they know we care, mm -hmm. they care, and we're going to press them until they show us they're mm -hmm. making progress. Some don't do as much as they ought to. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, it's not a magic pill. This is about leadership and teamwork and and intention. So what does great leadership look like in a district? Great leadership in our work, we, again, our our kind of mode of operation is simplify. Mm -hmm. Simplify because people have a lot to do in schools. It's a busy, crazy place. Yes, it is. So all that we ask for, again, at the, at the school level, all we ask for is that action team, mm -hmm. and we, then we guide them in the structures and processes that we test it. At the district level, we ask for a named leader. Mm -hmm. Who will be your leader for partnerships? And we will help make that person an expert so that they will be viewed as a legitimate leader for their schools. So they you leave capacity building in the right. district. Right, and so what's, what's, what's unusual about that? Well, there really haven't been named leaders for partnerships. Right. There's a named reading coach or a reading curricular expert. Mm -hmm. There's a math expert, mm -hmm. a leader for partnership. Yeah. Well, we haven't gotten around to that yet. Or people say, well, we don't have any funds for yeah. that. Yes. You, yes, you do. do. <laughs> and, and that brings us to a key, a key issue. Right now in Connecticut, as we speak, there's great debate about the reform that's going on. Um, the there's, you know, the teachers are involved. Um, the governor has set forth a bill. Um, I think that was recently passed. A How, good bill. Or well, we it's, it's we don't know yet. <laughs> it's still debatable. Right, okay. It's it's pretty new, um, but. How, given the expert, the expertise that said parent involvement is important, mm -hmm. how do we get 
whatever reformist reform, reform comes to take that into consideration in terms of how that reform is implemented. Well, that's what we're parents. trying to tell you. We have now identified the there are eight essential elements mm -hmm. for making that happen. Mm -hmm. And if they're research-based, we don't put out an element until we've studied it. Mm -hmm. They are leadership, the, the superintendent, the principal have to agree that this is going to happen. Teamwork, you've got to have the action team structure in your school to reach out, to be the doers. They're the action arm of a Right. governing council. Without that, it's not going to happen. So they would give us the necessary tool to say prick. Um, well, and then we ask them to write an, an annual plan mm -hmm. that's the appendix of a school improvement plan. Mm -hmm. The appendix, or the appendix A, I like to call it, but it's an action plan for partnerships, an annual plan linked to particular goals in the school improvement plan. Then they implement, and they don't have to be the only ones to implement. They can ask the library, the community mm -hmm. librarian, or mm -hmm. two parents who have great computer skills, or three parents who are Spanish translators, or whatever, mm -hmm. to join this effort based on the written plan. Implement the plan. Mm -hmm. And then the piece that has been actually missing historically, and still too much today, is evaluate. Mm -hmm. Evaluate the progress you've made according to the goals that have been set in that written plan. See how you've done, because you're not going to get everything done the first time. Uh, make the next plan. We can get any school to write one plan in a training workshop, which we do as part of our workshop activity for the team. Getting to the second plan tells us they really want to do